ladies and gents, welcome to tonight's episode of La Mort Darth. Uh, where we finally see Sir Bowman having defeated the Knight of the Red Lands. Will Sir Bowman have his just reward? Or are there further turns and twists of the plot ahead? Hello, Mary, hello! How are you this very fine evening? And hello, Neil and Noel as well. Good evening to you all. I'm very, very, very happy to see you. As always, in fact. But hey, hey, hello, D. Come in, come in, come in. Come in, take up a seat, D. It's story time. Hello, Danny. Come in, come in, come in, come in. Come in. We'll find out whether Bowman manages to get his just rewards or if there's some worse fate still in store for him. Hello, Yasser. Come in, come in, come in. Come in. Hello, hello. Good evening to you. Welcome. Welcome to my readings of the Mark Dothar. Is it coldy? I, I will try. I will try. We've had it quite warm weather all week. We've got a bit of an Indian summer going on. So... After this, the after this, because I have to do it in private, I will go and do the the weather dance. Um, wherein what I have to do is I've got to go um, over to Massam in the Yorkshire Dales, where the Druids still are, um, strip naked and then dance around some of the standing stones, yelling, "Oh summer, oh summer." Go ye to, and I can't finish the incantation, otherwise you'll all know the secret incantation. But I will go after this, drive in the middle of the night, all the way over there. Yeah, is it too much information? Is it D? I, I'm not, I think, I think at, we're at what, you know, my 127th of these? I think it's time to talk about druidic rituals in the middle of the Yorkshire Dales. Anyway, hello Darren! Darren, welcome, welcome, hello Darren and Carly and Mazella and Kerry and Kathy, welcome, how have you all been? Darren, Darren was here for, for episode number one, in fact, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's because of Darren that I'm doing all of this to begin with, as, as he and I swapped the idea over a nice campfire, which is how stories should be told, so hello, Good evening to you all. Um, there was no dancing around those campfires, though, D. So, so rest assured, um, if you were any fear of that happening, clothes were kept on. Hello, hello. How are you? I hope you're doing really, really well. I'm doing well. So. Excellent. I try to organise my evenings so that I'm ready for these readings as well, Noel. Um, sometimes it doesn't quite go to plan. Um, I've just finished uh, eating my dinner, I cooked it a wee bit late, got stuck in traffic. It's a nice hay-baked chicken, very, very tasty, very, very scrummy, um, but literally I'm five minutes from the table as I ran back to go and do this. So I've still got the taste of some very cidery chicken in my mouth, which is good and makes me certainly in a good mood to do tonight's story. So... Without further ado, I, tr I tried very briefly to do a cooking show um, and it just doesn't seem to work on Periscope. There are some things that shouldn't be done live. Good, at, le at least you can hear me, Darren, even if I'm probably going in frozen mode for you. The hearing's the important part. And without further ado, I'll get into tonight's tale. As... We tell the story of Sir Bowman having defeated the Knight of the Red Land. So, to give you a quick recap, there is a knight, Sir Bowman. So I'm going to shorten this recap now as, as the season progresses. There is a knight, Sir Bowman, who has gone off to save a lady who has been laid siege to by an evil knight. The Knight of the Red Lands. The Knight of the Red Lands was holding siege to this damsel's castle, the Lady Lynette, because he said 
that he'd sworn an oath to slay either Sir Gawain or Sir Lancelot, and he thought that by holding this siege, one of those two knights would come out to face him. Neither of those knights came out to face him. Instead, the man who faced him was Sir Gawain's brother. In disguise, it was Sir Bowman, who has now defeated her. And in answer to Carly's question, Bowman does not love the damsel who has brought him to this castle. He's been brought here by the Lady Lynette. However, it's the Lady the, Le the, the, the Lady the Leon, who is the owner of the castle, the one who has been laid siege to, and that Sir Bowman has fallen in love with. We now join these two, um, Sir, uh, Sir Bowman and the Lady Lynette, at the foot of the castle, Sir Bowman having defeated the Knight of the Red Lands and made him yield. And Bowman finally, finally, after many months of perilous trekking, ready to accept his reward from the Lady de Leon, who he loves. Without having met her, to be fair, but one that he loves. Will all be as it seems? Will he get his just reward, ladies and gents? Let's find out. Then, after the Knight of the Red Lands yielded himself, there came many earls and barons and noble knights, and they prayed that knight to save his life and take him as a prisoner. And all of them fell on their knees and prayed for Sir Bowman to have mercy and to save the knight the life of the Knight of the Red Lands. And they said, Sir, it were fairer of you to take homage and fealty of this man and let him hold his lands of you than for you to slay him. By his death you shall have no advantage and his misdeeds that have been done may not be undone. Therefore, he shall make amends to all parties and we will all become your men and do your homage and fealty. Fair lords, said Bowman's, I will have you know that I am loath to slay this knight. Nevertheless, he hath done passing ill and shamefully, but in so much all that he did was at a lady's request, and for that I blame him the less. And so for your sake, I will release him. And he shall keep his life upon this promise, that he go within the castle and yield himself there to the lady. And if she will forgive him and let him be, I will forgive him and let him be as well. And with this, he will make her amends of the trespasses he hath done against her and her lands. And also, when that is done, he shall go unto the court of King Arthur, and there ask for Sir Lancelot to show him mercy, as well as Sir Gawain, for the evil that he has done against them. Sir, said the Red Light Knight of the Red Lands, all this will I do as ye command, and seek assurance, and I trust that you shall have. And so, when the assurances were made, and he had made his homage and fealty, and all those earls and barons with him, and then the maiden Lynette came to Sir Bowman, and unarmed him, and searched his wounds, and stinted his blood, and in like ways she did so to the Red Knight of the Red Lands, and there they waited ten days in their tents. And the Red Knight made his lords and servants to do all the pleasure they might unto Sir Bowman. And so, within a while, the Red Knight of the Red Lands went to the castle and put himself in the grace of the Lady de Leon. And so she received him upon sufficient surety, so all her hurts were well restored of all that she could complain. And then, he departed unto the court of King Arthur, 
And there, openly the knight of the Red Lands puts himself in the mercy of Sir Lancelot and Sir Gawain. And there he told openly how he was overcome and by whom. And also he told all the battles from the beginning unto the end. Jesus mercy, said King Arthur and Sir Gawain. We marvel much of what blood he has come, for he is a noble knight. Have ye no marvel, said Sir Lancelot, for you shall witness well that he has come of noble blood. And as for his might and hardiness, there be but few now living that is as mighty as he, and so noble of prowess as well. It seemeth by you, said King Arthur, that you know his name, and from whence he has come, and of what blood he is. I suppose I do, said Lancelot, or else I would not have given him the order of knighthood, and he gave me such charge at that time that I should never discover him until he required me, or else it be known openly by some other. Halfway through tonight's tales, ladies and gents, Bowman has decided to spare the life of the Knight of the Red Lands. The Knight of the Red Lands has gone now to Camelot to tell all of this to King Arthur, who in the company of Sir Gawain and Sir Lancelot are beginning to see what a knight of full prowess Sir Bowman is. No, that is a lovely, lovely thing to say. Thank you very, very much. That's very kind of you. And now I'd ask you to join me for the second half of tonight's tale. As we find out what happens when Sir Bowman goes to seek his just reward from the Lady de Leon. Now we turn unto Sir Bowman, who desired of Lynette that he might see her sister, his lady. Sir, she said, I would fain that you saw her. Then Sir Bowman armed himself and took his horse and his spear and rode up to the castle. And when he came to the gate, he found there many men armed. And they'd pulled up the drawbridge and drew the gate closed. Then Bowman marvelled at why they would not allow him to enter, and he looked up to the window, and there he saw the fair lady the Leon that said on high, Go on your way, Sir Bowman, for as yet you shall not have wholly my love until the time that you can be called one of the number of the worthy knights. And therefore, go, labour in worship for twelve months. Then you shall hear new tidings, perhaps. Alas, fair lady, said Bowman, I have not deserved that you should show me this strangeness. And... I had believed that I should have right good cheer with you. Unto my power I have destroyed thanks and, well, I'm sure I have bought your love with part of the best blood of my own body. Fair, courteous knight, said Dame Leons, be not displeased or over hasty. For you should know that your great travail nor good love shall be lost. For I consider the work that you've done so far to be great. Therefore, go on your way and look that you be of good comfort. For all shall be done for your worship and for the best. And in twelve months time it will soon be done. And trust me, fair knight, I shall be true to you. And never betray you, but to my death I shall love you and no other. And therewithal she turned from the window, and Sir Bowman rode away from the castle, making great doom. 
and so he rode here and there, and didn't really see where he rode until it was dark night, and then it happened to him to come to a poor man's house, and there he harboured all that night. But Sir Bowman had no rest. He wallowed and wreathed for the love of the lady of the castle. And so, upon the morrow, he took his horse and rode until undone. And then he came to a broad water. And thereby was a great lodge. And there he alit down to sleep and laid his head upon his shield and betook his horse to his page, a dwarf, and commanded him to watch all night. And now we turn to the lady of the same castle, that thought much upon Bowman, and then she called unto her Sir Gringamore, her brother, and prayed him in all manner as he loved her heartily, that he would ride after Sir Bowman, and ever he was to wait upon Bowman till he might find him sleeping. For I am sure in his heaviness he will alight down in some place and lie himself down to sleep, and therefore have your weight upon him, and in the most secretive manner you can. Take his dwarf page, and go on your way with him as fast as ever you may, before Sir Bowman awakes. For my sister, Lynette, tells me that he can tell me of what kindred Bowman has come, and what is his right name. And in the meanwhile, I and my sister will ride to your castle, and await for you to bring the dwarf. And... When you have brought him to your castle, I will examine the man himself myself, until I know what Bowman's true name is, and of what kindred he has come. Until then, I can never be merry at my heart. Sister, said Sir Gringamore, all this shall be done after your intent. And so he rode all the other day and night, till he found Sir Bowman lying by a water, and his head upon his shield to sleep. And when he saw Sir Bowman fast asleep, he came stilly stalking behind the dwarf, plucked him fast under his arm, and so rode away with him as fast as ever he might, unto his own castle. And this, Sir Gringamore's arms were all black, and that to him longeth. But ever as he rode with the dwarf toward his castle, he cried unto his lord and prayed of his help, and therefore awoke Sir Bowman, and up he leapt lightly, and saw where Sir Gringamore rode away with his dwarf. And so Sir Gringamore rode out of sight. Ladies and gents, we end tonight's tale there. Sir Bowman! has had his page stolen by the brother of the Lady the Leon, who wants to find out the true nature of this man before ever she could marry him. And on top of that, has set him 12 months of quests to prove himself as a worthy man before ever she would give herself to him in marriage. Join us tomorrow as we can continue this fine, fine tale. And thank you, Dee and Kathy and Noel. Thank you. I'm glad, glad you enjoyed that. Thank you, Darren. Poor old Sir Bowman. He never, never gets a break. Nearly as exciting as the naked Druidic dancing, but but I think they're both equally exciting in different ways, Danny. This thing I can do in front of other people and not have anybody freak out or report on me. The Druidic dancing, you know, comes with restraining orders and being banned from most villages in the Yorkshire Dales. <laughs> I can't wait to find out what happens either, Cardi. And you're quite right. The Lady de Leon is playing hard to get 
which I'm sure no woman has ever done before. At least, possibly not to the extent that the Lady de Leon is doing. That's, that's some first-rate playing hard to get. I'd hate, hate to be in Sir Bowman's shoes trying to get that one sorted. <laughs> Unfortunately, Dee, um, you'll find that the Yorkshire Dales are awful for, for any kind of internet connection. So, <laughs> we need t-shirts with this. We need, we need t-shirts with Stay for the Smiting on them. Uh, <laughs> there will be no dancing. That will, just, that will just have to stay in your own imaginations tonight. Um, possibly haunting um, some of your dreams and giving you nightmares. But um, that will not be scoped. It'd be too dark anyway. You'd never, you'd never be able to pick up, pick up the definition. <laughs> it, it is, it is. But but this one is because I'm doing weather dancing. So <laughs> we must, we must stop discussing naked men in the Yorkshire Dales and sheep and and druidic stones. <laughs> Well, well, I'm. Thank you, Darren. I, I can only say thank you for finding a workaround for that problem. I will do it in secret. In fact, in fact, <laughs> please do, D. Google Street Maps. Google Street Maps does cover the Dales. Um. As a child going on holiday to the Yorkshire Dales, the, the maps that we were using back then didn't cover the roads in the Dales. And I once spent almost two hours lost on roads around Aesgarth and Hawes. Um, Aesgarth, which many of you will know from Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, um, it being the uh, little river where Robin fought Little John. Um, and there's Midland Castle and all that good stuff. But hey, for another time, for another time, I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to you all. Coming up um, in about seven minutes' time, I'm reading The Highwayman by Alfred Noyes over on Poetry Live. Oh, that's a shame, Carly. Well, do, do catch on replay. It's Dee's request tonight. Dee has requested The Highwayman, so I'll give it my narrative flair. Friday, Noel. Friday. Friday, I'm going to, to bear myself to you. Um, I need to stop using this language. On Friday, I'm going to read some of my narrative poetry to you all. So that's to look forward to as well. Um, I'm massively, massively nervous. But I'm, I know you're a nice crowd. So I'm really looking forward to sharing that stuff with you. So yes, Friday. Friday Noel um, is me tomorrow, and um, tonight it's Alfred Noyes with the Highwayman. Anyway, I'm going to go run downstairs, grab myself a 